So we're going to do actually a little something different and complimentary with what you've been seeing today. And uh, I hope people out there have some experience doing lateral surgery, okay? Putting screws in the back of the spine. Those are all kind of basic things. So actually, just as I said, it's complimentary to what uh, you've been hearing about single position prone and trans psoas and Dr. Pimenta's uh, a wor world expert. He's taught me, in fact, I think I went to visit him back in the early 2000s, which is, I think that makes about 20 years ago and learned how to do laterals. So um, I am going to do something that's a little bit different today. It's doing a lateral and uh, doing a lateral inner body and it's all do, also doing a lateral posterior. And we're gonna do it with, uh, with robotics. Uh, our experience in doing this actually, it goes back about over 10 years that we've been doing laterals and we use fluoroscopy and we put hardware in. Um, and so we used it back kind of in the stone ages. And so all of this right now that we're doing is with all this modern technology. In fact, we're going to do a navigation of the lateral inner body and we're gonna do the posterior screws. Um, you've been hearing a lot of things about how to, how to do the lateral. We're starting with the screws, right? Yes. Okay, so, but anyway, the lateral, I'll show you a few little tricks that I have about how to how to do things. Um, so we're gonna do bilateral incisions. This is our patient, lateral position. So we've skipped a lot of steps here, but they're not that many steps, okay? So the, the patient's positioned, it's true lateral, just like uh, Juan Uribe says, you must have the patient in a lateral position to do these things. A little less so with the robotics, because if, if the patient is positioned a little bit other than perfect true lateral, the robotics are gonna fire the screws in because we've already chosen trajectories, we've already done the imaging, we have reference frames of two different kinds. The Globus robot has a standard reference frame and it also has a secondary reference frame, which is really for uh, safety, just to make sure. So if they're not in sync or they're not three-dimensionally oriented, it's gonna tell you something's wrong. So the, that's a big check that it has. There are also other things is that your anatomic reference points that you do when you do the surgery. In fact, we can do really simple things like here's the ilium, okay? And we can see that, okay, we're, we're right on the ilium and there's the skin right underneath. We can put it on a spinous process, okay? So these are little reference points that we can do and there's a spinous process, yeah? Okay, so I'm assuming we're on the right spinous process because this thing's already been done. This is kind of like when I walk in the operating room, you know, my fellows residents and some of my junior attending guys, I tell them when I walk in, I want everything basically set up, but I do go in and I supervise the positioning of the patient and I, I make sure that it's done exactly the way I want it. So with that, we're gonna put screws in, okay? So the sequence of this also is that if you have a patient with a spondylo, okay, this patient does not, we already know that, but if you have a patient with a spondylo, you should go do the lateral first. Okay, because if you're gonna get all this nice reduction that you do with a lateral inner body implant, then you need to go put the lateral in first and then after, it's, after it is repositioned, the two vertebra are, then you need to re-image. You're gonna do an O-arm or you do, however you do your imaging, whether it's, whether it's with CT or whether it's with fluoro. Um, then you have to go back and re-navigate or reset all of your navigation so you can do your robotics. And the robotics, so it's the same thing as doing it in a prone position, except it's in a lateral position. So we need a knife, obviously. We're gonna start with our trajectories. Um, so we need, uh -huh. we're just gonna go to our first trajectory. Are we there, Tyler? Okay, so this thing's all pretty automatic. I gotta get out of the way, DRB movement. That's me. There we go, there's our first trajectory. So that's on the downside. So with the patient in a lateral position, they're the easy ones from up above and the ones on the downside. The positioning of the patient, the patient needs to be pulled to the edge of the table because you can't put pedicle screws in that are lateral medial trajectory if you have the patient sitting in the middle of the table like they had it actually when I came in and Tyler made it all right with his whole team of people here. So we're good. 
we're ready to go. So it's actually pretty simple at this point is that we make an incision and sometimes I make a little bigger incision, but there are gonna be two of them. And that's what the upper one, right? And so we already have an incision. This is our first screw we're gonna put in. Sometimes I will have irrigation and if the skin is gonna hang up on us here, we're already touching bone. I'm gonna wiggle the spheres a little bit. And I'm going to step back all the way right through the pedicle. Yep. And put a longer, this is a longer screw, which we're already into the same trajectory that we are before. Screw, please. I do have the record at Cedar still, I think, for doing it the fastest, but I don't know if it's gonna be this fast. Hmm. But anyway, this is putting the downside screw in. This is the slow part, it's the human, rather than the drill bit, and that's where I said, sometimes the uh, incision is even too small. Down to bone, yes, green, thank you. Reposition, left L3, right there, you got it, thank you. I'm gonna pull back so we'll make sure that our trajectories aren't, we ready? Which one are we doing? Left? Okay. We're gonna go across and do the other side. Okay, knife. We ready? Not quite. This makes it look pretty simple. Am I good? Okay. As I said, these incisions are not quite big enough for me. I'm always saying I want bigger instruments and bigger incisions all the time. So sometimes I'll make them a little bit bigger than what we have. There we go, drill. Down to touch bone. Okay, that's through our first, through the cortex. Those things, it's important to have the drill spinning, okay, when you touch the bone. And this one should already have a pilot. So we already have a pilot hole, basically. There, it just dropped in. Okay, and this one is, we're done. Okay. And we skipped the sizing of the screws, but uh, as you heard already, these are 45 millimeter screws. But the whole key here is it's a lateral position and you know, we're, you're saving at least a half an hour we good? Yep, all right, great. We were planning to just go to the inner bucket now. Okay, so to do two more screws, we don't have to do two more screws, but we're gonna, there's two more screws, we would repeat the same thing at L4, put rods in, drop the rods in down through their standard kind of minimally invasive. Uh, I'm going to the lateral. All right, Tyler's gonna help me set this thing up. Okay, so a couple of little caveats about this, okay? Everybody has their little, their little, uh, does this, we have an overhead camera here? No, we don't? Okay. When you put a patient in a true lateral position, I haven't heard anybody say mid-axillary line. Mid-axillary line is where I believe that we want to make our entry point and if we use the reference, can we show a picture, Tyler? Just for these purposes. That's where I already chose one. 
There's a trajectory right there, a little bit caudal. There we go. So here's your initial trajectory as we look at it. And so it's right where the patient's curvature is. It's like the equator of the earth. I say if I take my pen and I set it on the patient, it's right where the clip is. Okay? And that's where, and if you shoot it with a fluoro or something like that, but it's, it's really where the mid-axillary line is, is going to get you into the retroperitoneal space that you've heard in all the recent lectures this morning. Okay, so I need a skin knife. And you've heard about the opening, the exposure. I mean, it's been belabored a lot. Put a retractor in, you have a scissor, have a METS. Oh my goodness, we need a real instrument. There we go. Anyone, there you go. Big mayo, oh boy, mayo scissor. You can let relax a little bit. There you go. Okay, and you've seen, all, seen and heard about all of the entry. It's all muscle splitting. I don't wanna see a muscle cut. To me, it's all muscle splitting. Okay, you go through the skin, all muscle splitting. So hopefully there's no bleeding. Okay, we can use the pointer. Um, we use nerve monitoring, obviously. Um, we're not doing it here today, uh, but we do it. Here's straight through the psoas. I mean, that's just your navigation probe. I call them turkey foot, crow foot in LA. What do they call this thing? They call it the alien probe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is navigated. Okay, we're gonna put it in and find the same spot. We're a little bit posterior, a little cephalocaudal trajectory, a little bit posterior. We would be monitoring this with nerve monitoring. Um, There you go. Let's go with that trajectory right there. You stick the wire. May need a coker. You have a coker or a needle driver? Yeah. Grab that and... Hang on a second, I'm hitting bone here. Pull her back out just a little bit, Neil. Mm -hmm. Your assistance, needing assistance. Okay, and we're going to go a little bit forward. There you go. Oh yeah, much easier. Does that feel soft? Yeah. Oh good, put it in a little more. There you go. All right, good. That's in plenty, right? Mm -hmm. All your dilators. Okay, and we'd use monitor dilators. Put it in, keep going. Only use two dilators. We'll check nav. Again. We'll check nav. We're in the place. It should be in the place. Yep. All right. Oh. Hold on to this. Here. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Yar. Thank you. It's getting these things all talking to each other. We good, all right? Yeah. Looks perfect. It's really simple. That's what I tell everybody in surgery. It's really simple, just do it perfect. <laughs> okay, and we're gonna have the holder. Yes. This is all the way down. You hook up. Hook up to our navigation. So the robot doesn't do anything here except hold. We use a robot a lot when we're doing thoracic endoscopy is it to hold the endoscope things. So we use some of the old robotics for that. 
Office is doing the same thing. Come closer. There you go. Come closer, Tyler. There you go. Pull that up, tighten her up, Neil. You give us, put our navigation back on top of this, please, while we're tightening it up. There you go. Just recheck and see if we're happy. Okay. Um, won't be able to? No. Okay. So our navigation here. We can loosen this stuff. I want to loosen this. There we go. Thank you. Okay. Yes. All right, tighten her up. So we're off a little tight. Loosen it up again, Neil. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, we're a little, a little bit off. Go ahead. We're good. Okay, so we go in, clean out the disk space, have some lights. Where's our screwdriver opener? Okay, we know our K-wire is in good position, right? We're a little bit off with our navigation, but that's all right. You see the lights there, Neil? Come on, get in there. There you go. You stick that one in. Yes, sir. I'm trying to get this out of your way. Got to see what we're doing down at the bottom. It's got these little rails. I have a learning disability for these two. Don't worry. <laughs> there, is. there we go. Turn your lights on. Okay. And here we are. I don't know if we we don't have any way to look down inside. But we have, have a, here's our navigation probe. So Pat, do you do you uh, use a shim to stabilize the retractor at all? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. This thing is anchored in position. You can put a shim in. It has one. Um, give me the. Uh, Open this up a little bit more. There we go. Okay. Yeah, we're in a line of sight here for our competing. There we go. There is down into the disk space. All right. Yeah. We're a little bit, a little bit below. Uh, I'm losing my navigation. That's all right. I think navigation is more important here than seeing inside. So. There we go, into the disk space with our pointer. Okay, we have our knife. Okay, so most of this is actually pretty standard. Open the disk space, you know, just sweep the muscle aside.
And obviously this is gonna bleed a little bit when we do these procedures. Fortunately, the cadaver doesn't bleed. Have the navigated uh, periosteal elevator. There you go. We're off a little bit right there. That's my favorite tool. That's my favorite hammer device right there. I need to see, there we go. Well, we're a little bit parallel. There we go. Okay, so you clean out your disc space. I mean, there's your periosteal elevator, my favorite tool. In fact, I think that's the most important tool. I don't use many other tools in the disc space. Hold on to this, please, Neil. I don't use many other tools in the disc space. I think that a periosteal elevator, okay, this tool, I don't know, can you zoom in on that thing? Yeah, this tool. You get it on the edge of the vertebral body, you get underneath the cartilaginous end plate, and you stay bone on bone. It's like scraping linoleum or wallpaper. I say that to sometimes in LA. I say, you ever scrape a linoleum? I go, no, how about, how about snow and ice off of your sidewalk? Nobody in LA <laughs> knows what that is. So that tool, turn it around, get the other side. If you use this tool right, it takes you about two passes to clean out the whole disc space. Then you reach in there, forget the, the pituitary. This device is the most important thing. All the way to the other side, pop it out the other side. That cleans your disc space, and then you're, re you're ready for your implant. You've got all kinds of tools. They're all navigated, all the usual tools, you know, but. There we go. There's in the space. So we're making it go into a disc space without cleaning the disc space out. As I said, we're phase shifted a little bit here, but this is kind of strong arming it. You can measure it for off of this. Um, what are your measurements here, 40, 50? Yeah, we've already measured a 50. In You've already measured a 50 for me, okay. All right, okay. That actually kind of concludes the, the, whole, yeah. the whole procedure. Okay, I can put an implant in, so. I'll come over and take any questions. Do you have any from the audience right now? Any, any questions for Dr. Johnson? Yeah, go ahead. All right. Awesome. Thank you all very much. Uh, one, one, <laughs> yeah. one, one question was, uh, how did you mount uh, the reference array? Uh, posterior iliac spine. So there's not any specific place to do it other than it's about, this one is mounted probably a little more medial than I would put it. I'd put it a little further out, but it's wherever you think you can get the strongest purchase. Um, it actually has a pretty aggressive uh, kind of four-pronged end. You have one, an extra one around, Tyler, that you can show people what it looks like. Uh, does that give you an idea of what it looks like? I mean, that's a pretty aggressive looking tool that's gonna give you quadrilateral stability. Uh, the old pelvic pins we used to use, I mean, they look more like this thing, the, the blunt end of it, but this fork-shaped thing that it goes down, it sinks through cortical bone on the ilium into the cancellous bone, uh, that, that's a very strong device. I have a lot of confidence in that. Uh, reference frames are a whole big discussion about how to do that with robotics. I mean, it's, it's depending on this, and it's a very good one. I mean, I'll talk a little bit about uh, uh, reference frames and where to put them, spinous processes versus various different devices. But, uh, you know, that, that's a good question, though. With this one, it's uh, relying completely on the uh, pelvic uh, rim uh, to put the reference frame uh, implant in. Any other questions? Great. Good.